busy trying to create value for the business still during the 21 month period of time. In automotive, we've actually strengthened our position in autonomous driving, not full autonomous, but in safer driving through like level three. Uh, in the Internet of Things, we now have clarity relative to how our technology can help assist the usage of machine learning. And we actually see, you know, 75 billion connected devices by the year 2025, three times what it is today. Right. So being able, those factors play right into our sweet spot. So we're well positioned to take advantage of that. Being the leading semiconductor supplier into automotive, now moving into autonomous driving, we also now have developed technology where we can be a significant player in the electric vehicle market, especially as China has set aggressive targets on electric vehicle deployment. Now, you did say on the conference call, Although that when it comes to autonomous, fully autonomous, Qualcomm obviously was going to be an important partner, so they to were. speak, or NXP being a part of Qualcomm. They were. That's no longer going to be the case. So yeah. do you need to do more when it comes to fully autonomous to actually position this company properly? What we'll do is we'll try to use partnerships. And, and our real focus is how to take the machine learning from the artificial intelligence and then deploy that through microcontrollers and applications processor with the broad range that can actually make every all of our lives easier using that information that comes out of the cloud and the artificial intelligence. Um, I want to talk a bit about the process you went through here, particularly sure. this end game. You know, I'd reported for a couple of weeks that Qualcomm was committed to saying no more after, uh, after the deadline of the 25th. But it was my understanding that you weren't necessarily on the same page. Would you have preferred to have seen them extend the deadline one more time? Well, you know, we thought that since Mothcom had to give an answer in phase three and by October 15th, it was worth at least just considering that. But, you know, now that the decision's made, it, for us it's all about focusing how we get back on outgrowing the market by more than 50 percent, how we can drive real shareholder value and get back on the path we were on for the last five or six years before the 21-month-ago announcement. Oh, I know. Did you see the announcement last night from, from the market regulators there? Uh, I they, heard rumors of they it, They sort yeah. of indicated that they were continuing their work and kind of gave some people who who listened to it or read it, the, uh, the understanding that it would have been approved if it had been more time. I mean, what do you make of that? You know, they had plenty of foresight. You know, they had discussions from both European and U.S. governments to tell them the 25th was the deadline. They didn't take any action associated with it. You know, it's not really for us to, to even reflect on that. It's time to move on, and, and, you know, Qualcomm's moving on. We're moving on. We both have bright futures, and we're looking forward to the, how we take advantage of that. To all those hedge fund managers out there who lost a lot of money on this who somehow seem to think that hope springs eternal, that someday they could say yes and that you guys could get back together. No chance of that, right? I don't think so. At this point, you know, it's about how we create more value than that over the next few years on our own path. Um, Leverage. Let's talk about the balance sure. sheet a bit because you are returning capital. You got $1.5 billion, I think, after tax from the $2 billion reverse termination fee. You're going to be running at a very low leverage level. Some, right. some investors like to see it higher. I think you could get down to as low as one times. How do you think about the balance sheet? Yeah, we're actually going to be below that right now. You know, we have $3 billion on the balance sheet at the end of the quarter after paying back $1.2 billion of debt last quarter. So we'll generate, continue to generate a lot of cash. We feel very comfortable with two times annualized EBITDA from a targeted debt level. So that gives us a lot of flexibility to continue to think about buybacks and how we return capital to shareholders. We'll think about, we have an analyst day coming up in New York on September 11th where we'll go through more of the details of our future. We'll talk about a dividend at that point in time and try to make a decision about what, how we implement a dividend. So our real focus is how we return as much of our capital to shareholders as we can.